Hi, I'm Duncan McLeod of Blackie's Products. Later in this video, we're going to go to our workshop to show you how to install a painted acrylic glass material called Mazan. Mazan is 100% waterproof, hygienic, easy to clean, and 25 times more impact resistant than traditional glass. Perfect for use in kitchen splashbacks, bathroom shower panels, commercial washroom plumbing systems, and the decorative cladding of walls. It has 22 plain colour decors to choose from. Mazan can be cut to size and have its edges polished using standard woodworking tools on site. So no need for templating or factory production, saving you time and money. So let's go to our workshop to see a complete guide to all the installation techniques for Mazan. So here we're simply going to cut Mazan to length. So we start off by putting a scrap piece of MDF or an old work surface, something of that nature underneath it to maintain it being fully supported. Put the guide rail into place, clamp it into position and then we simply start to cut using a plunge saw. So we've cut the mazan to size using the circular saw. That leaves quite a rough edge to it, but isn't a problem. We can bring it to a glass-like edge using the edge polishing kit, but it takes a little bit more sanding. So to make it so it's time-saving and gives a much cleaner finish, we could trim it with a router. So we're just going to run a router across the edge of this one. As you can see, that only takes a few seconds to do, but leaves you with a much cleaner finish. We'll show a close-up of that in a second. Here we're showing two pieces that have been cut. The bottom ones come straight off the circular saw, and as you can see, that leaves it quite rough. It isn't a problem in as much as it can be sanded to take it to a glass-like edge, but there's more sanding involved in it. Whereas the top one, where we trimmed it with the router, that still needs a little bit of sanding to turn it into a glass-like edge, but it's only going to take one maximum of two grades of sandpaper to leave that as a finished edge. So with the majority of kitchens, we're going to have to cut round sockets at some point. So here we've just got the double socket back box and the face that goes to it. The difference between these gives us about 15 mil tolerance, seven mil on either end and seven mil top to bottom. The reason for emphasising that is it shows that we don't need the mazan to be cut tight around it. What we have to do with the mazan is we mark out the socket, we then drill four pilot holes and then we drill four holes 8 to 10 mil um, using, sounds silly this, using a blunt drill. The drill itself should have a 9 degree pitch and it's suitable for cutting acrylics. 
but it's very important that we never cut these corners to a 90 degree angle. If you cut to 90 degrees just by using your jigsaw, what you'll do is create a stress within the material which that puts it to a position where it could crack coming out from the corners. Just by tightening your socket that little bit too much, it puts an extra stress in the material, whereas the radius takes it out. So we've marked the socket out. On the top part of it here, we've marked this as though we're going from the work surface to the underside of a wall cupboard, and then stepping it up towards the bottom of an extractor. Again, where we're doing this, from the bottom of the cupboard, we need to be a mil and a half away to two mil. Same coming up on the side here. It's got to have that room to expand and contract. Bearing in mind, if this is coming behind the hob area, that's the hottest part of the kitchen and therefore it will expand. It's not a case of it might, it will definitely expand. Again, that needs to be a radius corner coming into to here. Um, no 90 degree corners. So if it's the cabinet or it's the light helmet, we must get that radius around it and leave it with room to expand and contract. It's very important that the mizan remains fully supported. So again, we've put it onto a bench, which is a scrap piece of material. We're then going to use uh, a pilot hole. You can, if you're brave, take your eight to 10 mil uh, drill bit and potentially drill straight through. But equally the same, it's liable to slip. So by putting the pilot hole through, first of all, that gives you some safety there. So just position your drill, bring it up down, and just on a slow speed. There we go, we're straight through, brought MDF out of it, so we know that's a clean cut hole. Do the one up by the top of the wall cupboard. And that leaves us with the pilot holes complete. So with the pilot holes all complete, we're then taking your drill bit, must emphasize this needs to be a blunt drill but then not let the drill bit do the work don't apply too much pressure otherwise you may get some breakout coming on the back of it so just following the pilot hole just nice and steady and drill straight through into your baseboard below That gives us then the four corners drilled, one up at the top there for where we're going around a wall cupboard, and that's ready now just to be joined up with the jigsaw. Just to emphasize, within the, the Mazan installation guide, we're showing the difference between a blunt drill and a sharp drill. So the standard drill that you'd have for timber, for metal, becomes quite pointed. What we need is that to be a much lower angle, coming to about 90 degrees, or what's described as being a blunt drill that's then suitable for acrylics. What we've done here, just to emphasize this point, is in a scrap piece of material, we've drilled the pilot hole, and we've now got a drill that is a new drill bit. That's doing it with a pilot hole. If you were to just drill, then unfortunately, wrong type of drill, and it has literally just shattered the, the mazan itself. So it really is important that we use that blunt drill bit. So we drilled. Uh, the corners you using the pilot drill first of all we then completed the drilling in all five sections now all we need to do is just to join those holes using a jigsaw in doing that we're using a fine tooth acrylic uh, or metal cutting 
um, blade. important part with that is we keep it supported throughout whilst we're actually cutting it. We don't go through too far and square the corners. It's important that we maintain that radius in each of the corners. So we completed the cutout uh, with the jigsaw. It leaves a slightly rough edge to it. So simply just deburr that, just using 100 grit sandpaper, just around the inside of it, to make sure there's no sharp edges left to it. That's all we need to do with that one. Just to show how this um, fitted, then the metal socket just protrudes through to the, the face of the uh, acrylic panel and you can see around the edges to it there that there's a clear gap uh, all the way around. No part of that metal socket is touching the acrylic panel at all. Uh, and when you come onto the corners they're nicely radiused so we've taken the stress out of the material. So the last part on this panel, we just need to finish the edges off um, to bring it to that polished edge. So this was a routed edge, so I've just got 400 grit sandpaper there and we just need to, making sure we don't rock on it, just keep it vertical and just sand along the edge there, nice and neat. This would be the, the end of a run uh, and therefore visible. And that's nice and smooth. Go into the underside of the wall cupboard and it'll be that edge there and that'll be sitting about a mil and a half to two mil away from the bottom of the cabinet and this part of it would just be going up the side up to the extractor itself. Again at the side of the wall cupboard. On the base again just finished it there with 400 change that over and go to 600 which gives you the final sand and this will bring you through to the nice smooth shiny finish. Doesn't take long at all. If you chose to you on a larger piece uh, could use a palm sander and just run that along just keep it in mind that with a wider base on a palm sander there's more of a tendency to rock so just keep that away slightly. From there peel it back, peel the protective coating back about 30mm get rid of some of the dust from there and then on each of the edges we need to apply the Merker M35 polish. Just on the face of it and onto the edge itself, bring that into it. This just removes any fine scratching. And indeed, if, if you did manage to scratch the surface in any way, just line scratching, then that scratching can be removed just by using this Merker M35. A bit like doing the car body. We're up to this point, the protective coating on the face and on the back always remains intact.
So that's all the machining finished on that panel. So that's all the sanding completed. Everything's ready now for the panel itself. The final part of it would become to adhere it to the wall. So from the back part, then we need to remove the protective coating. So this is then the painted side of the panel. So for the adhesive, we're now using low modular neutral cure adhesive uh, which we need to put a bead of adhesive then around the outside edges around any socket cutouts and then 100 mil apart beads of adhesive that would then be pushed against the wall but rather than push it against with your hands if there was any unevenness any undulations in the plaster work if you press it by your hands the mizan will flex and follow that. So by putting a spirit level or a piece of wood across the face of the product and pushing that onto the wall, then you'll take out those undulations in the wall itself. So all the machining completed, it's been bonded to the wall. The final part of it then is simply to remove the protective coating from the front. So the last part of it there is electricians had come along, make the final connections onto the sockets. Uh, which certainly coming off a reflective colour as this looks excellent now. Once Mazan's been installed, then very rarely will you actually find that uh, you, you find a damaged product, a scratched product. But in that unlikely event, it can actually be repaired. So here we're going to show how we take that repair. But rather than doing it just with a light scratch, then we're putting a few deeper scratches into it, just to show how it can be repaired. So from where we put this deep scratch into it, which was deeper than we thought, and as much as I can get my fingernail into there now, we then need to start to remove them to bring it back to a polished finish. So we start off with 600 grit sanding disc, on a random orbital sander. Moving then on to 800, 1000, 1500 grit, finishing off there with 3000 before we go on to a polishing pad which we use with Merca M35 and then on to the lamb's wool polishing. So starting with the 600 So the surface as it is, we used the 600 grit to remove the depth of the scratch and now we simply moved on to the 800 sanding uh, grit. In between time, what we've had to do is just to dust it off to make sure that all of the dust from the previous grit has been removed, otherwise you're polishing in the rougher grit. So having used the 800 grit, we've now dusted off the grit that was left over and we've switched to a 1000 pad. So we've now moved on again, cleaned the dust off and we go from 1000 grit just being used over to 1500 grit. So now we're finished with the 1500 grit and we move on to the 3000 grit, which the 3000 grit becomes more of a foam pad 
as you start to use that. But you can see from where we've started going through the grits now. So we've now applied some Merca M35 and just a little bit of water just to keep it moist so ready for starting to sand again and on this occasion we go through to a polishing pad. So we've just sanded this using the Merca M35 uh, with, along with the polishing pad just apply a little bit more water and all we need to do with this one is simply to clean it off. And you can start to see then the finished, res finished results. Only one polishing bit left to do, which we do that with the lamb's wool polishing bag. Okay. So the Merca M35 with the polishing pads being done all over, allow that just to dry um, and then with the lamb's wool polishing pad um, we start to then just polish it over. takes us to the finished product and back to having a high shine across and the deeper scratches have now gone. All of the instructions that are needed to make a repair for scratching are all covered in the care and maintenance leaflet. That takes you through all the grades of sandpapers that are being used, all of which are supplied within the kit. Some customers prefer to use the uh, profiles which we've got the profiles, internal, external, end caps and H sections, uh, allowing us to join the mizan together without the need of polishing. So you're bringing it straight off the saw, you save a little bit of time in the sanding uh, of any exposed edges, but then it goes on the same way as this. So you've got the end cap, the external corner, internal corner, H section, and you simply move around the room in that way. In doing that, uh, it can be saving some time. What you have to remember to do is to allow the panel still to expand and contract within the profile itself. Mizan's absolutely fine with heat. It can stand temperatures up to 100 degrees C. So as far as steam's concerned, it's not going to cause a problem. It can be used in the kitchen or in a shower area uh, and as long as we've got the room for it to expand and contract it won't cause a problem. Behind a ceramic hob or an induction hob it's absolutely fine but if you wanted to use it behind a gas hob then we need to make one change there and we need to add flame protection to it. So to do that we've got a glass panel available in widths of 600 or 900 widths 750 high so it goes from the work surface to the underside of the extractor and that will give us the flame protection we need to use behind gas. Those are available in each of the colours. For further information relating to these go to the Blackheath or the Mizan website for installation instructions or for care and maintenance instructions.